Hi everyone, here's the Bukamis once again. The scarf is not a fashion statement, I have a sore throat, but I'm still filming through the pain to talk to you a bit about Italo Calvino, one of my favorite Italian writers of all times, and one of the key figures in 20th century Italian literature, definitely the key figure in Italian postmodernism. Only Umberto Eco can challenge him on that front. He's also one of the most widely read, internationally speaking, among Italian authors. This is medicine, by the way, it totally sucks. Um, he is one of the most translated Italian writers from the 20th century. That's a good way for me to introduce you to some great Italian literature uh, translated in English. Today I'm going to talk about Calvino's best books. Calvino has a huge production and many of his novels are famous because they're quirky, because they are very ex eccentric. Calvino is very good at defamiliarizing you with stuff, which is one of the basic functions of literature. By talking about weird, odd, strange worlds, it makes you reflect and discover anew the world you live in every day. And maybe it makes you look at some stuff that you took for granted under a new light. And maybe you start realizing that some shit that's taken as normal nowadays is actually horrible and shouldn't happen. Or that maybe some shit that you take as normal is actually miraculous. And that should be all, should always be grateful for the opportunities you have in life. In Italy is kind of a love him or hate him writer. Lots of people I know hate him and hate his stuff for good reasons, but uh, I think that the works of his that are more famous internationally are those that are quirky on because they reflect on the role of literature, on the role of reading. He has, of course, written a very famous article on why we should read the classics. Do check that out. And in general, I think he is one of those authors that all book lovers should read because he tells you something about the way you read, the why you read and love books. And after you've read some Calvino, you'll never read other stuff in quite the same way. So let's go with that top five. Number five is The Path to the Spider's Nest, which in Italian is Il Sentiero de Nidi di Ragno, which is a bit different from the other books in this chart. It is Calvino's debut novel, and it is kind of a historical novel about one of the most problematic moments in Italian history, which is the end of World War II and the resistance to the German occupation of Italy and to the fascist regime in the north, which is one of the most, again, problematic and discussed moment in our recent history. I wouldn't say this is a necessary book for any reader. This is not very much about, you know, reading books. It's more about that specific moment in history. But if you are interested in Italian history, by all means, if you are Italian, you should check this book out. It is one of the most outspoken and clear books on what fascism actually was. The other one being Fontamara by Ignazio Silone, another um, must read. Spoiler alert, fascism was about evil people doing evil shit openly. Um, the thing that makes this, The Path to the Spider's Nest a great novel is that it focuses so much on the humanity of the people fighting this war against basically their own brothers. And it's a book I would compare to For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernst Hemingway, which also deals with a civil war, the Spanish civil war in the 30s. Uh, the Path to the Spider's Nest is less self-absorbed in the world of the main character. In a way, it is lighter, it is more Italian, it is more heartfelt. Number four is The Invisible Cities. Here we get to the quirk, here we get to the Calvino people usually love, to the author that is often compared to people such as Philip Dick or J.G. Ballard. This, is, this can actually be read as a science fiction novel. Basically, Marco Polo, the Venetian explorer, talks to Genghis Khan and tells him about all the cities he has visited, except that these are weird cities, these are impossible cities, these are cities that couldn't exist according to the laws of physics. And all of these cities are weird, and this is a weird book. In a way, it is hardly a novel or a short story collection at all. It is just a collection of descriptions of impossible cities. And it achieves beautifully that defamiliar defamiliarization I told you about earlier. It makes you look at life in a city, at life in such a communal space differently. It's kind of a mindfuck, much more than a novel. For this reason, lots of people might not like it, but it's very short and it will stay with you forever. It's really a must read. Number three is The Club and Viscount, the first book in the Our Ancestors trilogy, some of Calvino's most famous novels about these uh, members of the nobility from the Italian past, these impossible, weird stories that are always extremely heartfelt and fascinating. The Club and Viscount is about a guy who actually gets cloven in a battle, it gets divided in two and through some kind of Dr. Frankenstein experiment 
half of him survives and the other half survives too, but these two halves uh, basically embody his good side and his bad side. And the two um, Viscounts that come out of this experiment are extremely evil and extremely good. Of course, the reflection at the art of the book, as you probably imagine, is the way in which good and evil are both needed in life, and an excess of good is just as bad as an excess of evil, but it's also a reflection on the relationship between people of power and uh, pe poor people, or normal, everyday people. In general, it fuses Calvino's political reflections and human reflections beautifully, in the way other of his books do not do, not do too well. Um, the Invisible Knight, which is the last book in our Ancestors trilogy, is good, but not excessively. I felt like that one was a little bit too political and a little... Uh, to, there wasn't that much of a novel in there. Number two is If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvino, the one Calvino book I think everyone should read. It tells you something basic about the, the function of literature and why we read and the way we read. It is also one of the key texts of international postmodernism. I believe most of you already know the key mechanism at the heart of the book which is that, you know, it's a, it's continuously a story nested within another story, within another story, uh, all these stories belonging to different genres. Some people find it very annoying. Definitely, it's not your, like, your average book. It's a kind of a quirky experience, for sure. But if you're addicted to storytelling, and if you can't get enough, and if you like jumps between genres and reflections on why we read again, this is a key text. And even if you don't like it, I believe you should stick to it, with it to the end, because again, it's one of those books that you will never you, you will never look at other books the same way after you've finished it. It is a bit of a masturbatory experience, considering it's a book about, you know, reading books, especially a book about reading this one book in particular, but again, it's, it's great. Finally, number one, by far I think my favorite Calvino's novel, the Baron in the Trees, number two in Our Ancestors Trilogy, one of the most heartbreaking books I've ever read. Again, quirky ancestor. Here, the key concept is that this guy, when he was very little, uh, basically, well, I won't spoil you the book, but, you know, no, I won't spoil you the book. It's a very, very interesting concept. If you're Italian, I'm sure you know it, it's basically seeped into popular culture. If you don't know what The Baron in the Trees is about, read it and find out by yourself. You find out in on page three, basically. And it's one of the quirkiest books of all times, but it's at, at its heart, what it is really, it's a heartbreaking uh, love story about two lovers that are destined to be together, but are just too proud and self-absorbed to be so. And it's really heartbreaking, I, I have to say it again. And while it is sad, it is also extremely humorous, and it's also intelligent, and again, it reflects on society and defamiliarizes society beautifully, it's great food for thought. I think it's one of the masterpieces of, well, I'd say fantasy, although it is not strictly speaking a fantasy, it's one of the great triumphs of the imagination. That's it, these are my favorite Calvino novels. If you're really into quirky postmodern short stories that push the boundaries of language to the max, you should definitely check out the Cosmic Comics, which again is extremely quirky. It's a, it's a book in the same vein as Abbott's Flatland. Uh, if you're interested about Italian culture in the 20th century, Marco Valdo is another great novel to check out. And of course, let me know what do you think are Calvino's best works. This video, by the way, was a request, so if you have any author or writer or whatever you think I should talk about, I probably haven't read him or her, but again, ask and I'll let you know. Thank you so much for watching once again, guys. Do read, Calvino is great. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <music>